Monday in August. This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we are live. Hour number three, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. I have to shoot a three and a half, four hour TV commercial today after our show. Mm. You know what you're acting on? I'm not a good actor. I can't fake it. I, I'm not a good actor. I thought you did good in your in your show. What do you mean my show? The show you did. Didn't you do a show? Were you like buying sauce or something? Did I? Yes. I don't remember did it. Did you do a cameo in a show? Mm. Good fellas or something saying <laughs> that. I don't remember. I don't like acting. I'm not a good faker. I'm real I could never be an actor. I don't think no, you're not a faker, but I think you can give a performance. I mean this is what we do. Yeah. Is this a performance? I mean, we're in the, the entertainment industry. We turn it on a little bit. Yeah. I am wearing rouge right now. <laughs> I am wearing... By the way, we're on Sirius XM Channel 83. 50 minutes, John Middlecoff, uh, former NFL scout from the Bay Area. Thoughts on the Raiders and the 49ers. He's terrific. I have him on my podcast network. Uh, I'm going to give you a best for last today. The five players in the NFL uh, that I think are going to break out this year. None of them are rookies, but I think they're going to be breakout stars. They're going to be incredibly good fantasy football. If you play that sport, these guys are going to pop, and that'll be coming up. Okay, Antonio Brown drama continues to roll with no end in sight. There was the foot issue. Now there's the helmet issue. I strongly uh, advise you to go read Mike Silver, NFL Network, his Twitter account this weekend, very well sourced. He had a source who spoke to a, uh, a somebody, a Raiders source, who said about Antonio Brown, uh, it's honestly the helmet thing, the most insane thing I've ever heard. I don't even know why it's so important to him. It doesn't make any sense. Wow. By the way, the helmet issue is the NFL trying to improve safety has outlawed certain helmets. Tom Brady's helmet, he's got to get a new one. Antonio Brown's helmet, he's got to get a new one. Aaron Rodgers' helmet, he's got to get a new one. None of the guys are happy. A.B. has made it a big issue. He's now filed a grievance against the NFL. But here's the thing. Let's lo go look a chronological order of Antonio Brown football player. College. Red flags. Go look up his draft breakdown. Could be a problem. May drop off teams' boards. Really talented. Can be difficult. Then he goes to the pros. Teammate Ryan Clark says, if you pay Antonio Brown, you will regret it. He will not do good with lots of money and power. Let's move to week 17 of last year. Must win for the Steelers. He bails on the organization. Now he goes to Oakland, and it's crazy town. Because of a rule safety change implemented by the league, he can't handle it. Instead of treating it like an adult matter, he's become a petulant child. College, early NFL career, later NFL career, new team, four for four, crazy town. You know what this makes me think of? Zeke. So let's go to Ezekiel Elliott. Let's go to his chronological drama. College calls out an Ohio State coaching staff in a big game when they don't give him the ball enough. Then, leaving college, his dad warns NFL teams. He's just a kid. He's not ready for this. He is not ready to be an NFL star. Then he gets to the Cowboys, where he has several judicial issues. Now he's holding out in another country. So again, you don't see some Zeke potential in Antonio Brown. I do. Colin, that is, that, Antonio Brown is way worse. Yes, today. But if you go back six months ago, Zeke had far more off the field nonsense than Antonio Brown did. But Antonio Brown was showing you a pattern since college. A lot of ego, a lot of me, not a lot of us. Red flags, scouting reports, teammates calling him out, bails on the team. So, the, you know, listen, Pittsburgh's smart organization moves off dramatic player. Oakland, less smart of an organization, embraces him. New England, smart organization, takes Johnny Manziel off the board. <laughs> Cleveland, less smart organization, drafts him in the first round. You know, I've come to the conclusion in the NFL that basically it's like the rest of society. The really smart 10 to 20% at the top 
work the bottom and middle 80%. That's kind of that's kind of what society's like. That's a lot what the NFL is like. So when I watch the AB stuff, I don't know how you don't see some parallels and have some concerns with Zeke and paying him big money. I mean, to me, I'm just seeing warning, warning, flashing lights, warning. You can say it's not fair. Antonio Brown's worse. But six months ago, Zeke had the Mardi Gras incident, had the Vegas incident, had the judicial, the female allegation incident. Zeke six months ago had m way more uh, stuff on his resume, the bad resume, than A.B. did. Be very careful. Be very careful, people. Tell you who they are. Believe them. All right, let me uh, shift to this. I've, we've been on this story for uh, many days, and it's certainly worthy of it. So according to uh, Mike Lombardi of The Athletic, that's that subscription-based uh, <clears throat> service, a lot of good stuff on that, uh, Dak Prescott turned down a new contract worth $30 million annually. So here's what Dak Prescott is doing. Joe Flacco did this years ago. Dak wants to bet on himself. Um, Tom Brady's doing this in New England. I'll sign a one-year deal. I'll bet on myself. Now, when Joe Flacco did it, he had a very good defense behind him. And the AFC did not have a lot of obstacles in the playoffs. You had Brady, a really good rookie, Andrew Luck, and an old Peyton Manning, and Big Ben. But the NFC, if Dak's going to roll the dice on himself this year, turn down the offers, roll the dice, the NFC's deeper. It's got more good young coaches, McVay and Kyle Shanahan notably. I just want you to think of this. If you're going to bet on yourself, Joe Flacco bet on himself, but Joe Flacco looked around the AFC and thought, what are my obstacles in this, in this AFC to get along in the playoffs? Brady, old Peyton, young Andrew Luck, and Big Ben. Just think about the obstacles Dak Prescott will face at quarterback in the NFC. This is how loaded the NFC is. Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Jared Goff, Jimmy G, Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Cam Newton, Carson Wentz. Two of those, two of them will not make the playoffs. Yeah. So if you're going to roll your dice, remember this about Dak. Dak is not like Flacco, is not a stat monster. Flacco's never been big stat guy. So Flacco... To get his money, roll the dice on himself. He needed playoff wins. Because he's not a guy that can go and say, look, look, I have Patrick Mahomes, 5,000 yards. It's not who he is. Flacco and Dak are similar. They have a maturity. They can win on the road. They've been pretty good in bigger spots. They're often bad on a game that doesn't matter and good in games that matter. Flacco was always sort of a really good playoff road quarterback. Good in Foxborough, but could be bad at home against Cincinnati. Isn't that Dak? Dak isn't going to be able to say, look at my passing yards, look at my touchdowns, look at my passer rating. Flacco never could. The difference is Flacco, when he bet on himself, had very few obstacles. Look at the obstacles Dak has, because Dak, to get his money, is going to have to go, look, won my division, wild card win, second round. I don't see it. And by the way, what if Zeke holds out? So now you don't have Zeke, and you got to face those quarterbacks. This is also a run-first offense. So again, Dak's not going to have big numbers. What Dak is saying is, I'm going to roll the dice. We're going to win this division. We're going to get the playoffs. And by the way, if he goes wins two playoff games, then he's going to get the number. But what if he's a wild card team? Because Philadelphia, in my opinion, is the best roster in the NFL and the best team in the NFL this morning. So my guess is he's a wild card quarterback at best going on the road to face Baron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Jared Goff, Jimmy G, Cam, Matt. Car that is a big roll of the dice, regardless of how good you think Dak is. And I think we all think he's middle of the pack. If you're going to roll the dice, you got to be able to look at the obstacles presented in front of you going forward for the next six months. Whether it's me, whether it's your job, you're the attorney, you're the dentist, you're the artist, what it, the quarterback. But there are a lot of obstacles in the NFC for Dak. Not a stat guy, never going to be. He is rolling the dice on, you know, I'll win my division, I'll win some playoff games, and you'll have to pay me 38. Mm, I wouldn't do it. 
I, I, I would take the $30 million. The NFC has never been deeper. It's never been better. I mean, I was sitting there talking to the staff this morning. Who do we know that's terrible in the NFC? I can give you three or four in the AFC we know will be weak. We know Oakland won't be great. We know Denver won't be great. We know Buffalo won't be great. We know Miami won't be great. We know Jacksonville won't be great. You tell me in the NFC. I watch Kyler Murray. They could be interesting. So if I'm Dak, that $30 million, when the obstacles ahead presented look very, very difficult, I'd take the 30 large. Coming up next, the Raiders could be the tire fire of the NFL. The Niners could be the shock. That was my opinion after watching San Francisco this weekend and all the toys Kyle Shanahan has to play with. That's coming up next. We recently reported that a major credit card company, cyber criminals, got into their database and made a mess of it. Okay, 100 million people could be affected. And security researchers are saying, based on publicly available info, uh, other organizations are possible victims of this massive data security incident with a major credit card. I read a story two days ago about somebody that had their identity stolen. It took him six years to get it back. Brutal. Now, on average, a home has 17 devices. Cyber criminals need to just get into one. This is where LifeLock Identity Theft Protection, with the power of Norton Security, can come in to your house, to your devices, spot what you can't, and solve what you couldn't. They don't prevent all of them. They can't see every monitor, every transaction. But go to LifeLock.com or call 1-800-LIFELOCK. In both instances, use the promo code HERD for 10% off your first year. Cyber criminals, don't let them wreak havoc in your life.